Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Snap. And tonight will be a card review of all the cards that are available to the player, to a free to play player at rank 11. These are all the cards that were available to me as a free to play player at rank 11. So we'll do a review of them. We'll talk about deck building a little bit, talk about which cards get included in my deck and which do not and why. And we'll talk about potential uses for the cards that don't get included. The default deck that we get as a new player has a resource curve of three one cost cards, three two cost cards, two three cost, one four, two fives, and one six. Not a bad curve. I would recommend sticking to that as a new player. If you're gonna swap out one of your one cost cards, swap in another one cost card at least until you figure out when it might be appropriate to deviate from that. So we have five one cost cards to look at. Three of them will be included in the deck and two will not. And we'll talk about the three that are included and the reasons why they are included. And we'll talk about the two that are not included and the reasons why they are not included and when they might be useful. So the first card is going to be Ant-Man, a one cost, one power card with the ongoing effect if you have three other cards here plus three power. So Ant-Man has the potential to become a five power card. Hawkeye, one cost, one power on reveal. If you play a card here next turn plus two power, he has the potential to become a plus three power card. Reasonable certainty of accomplishing that. Ant-Man, reasonable certainty of being able to accomplish that. Well, I take that back. Ant when we talk about Ant-Man, to get his effect off, Four power for one cost seems pretty good compared to other one cost cards. However, you have to have three other cards here. So if you play him early, you have to be planning on filling up the board, filling up the location that he's at in order to take advantage of him. You're not usually gonna wanna play him when you've already got three cards on a location because it's gonna be kind of a weak, what I would call filler card, card that rounds out the location. Typically, you're going to want to use that for your late game cards, and that's going to seal the location. That's going to win the location for you. Ant-Man's not typically going to be something you're going to want to do that with, so... The more common use for Ant-Man is going to be to play him on a location and planning on playing three other cards at that location eventually. The problem is the game evolves as you go along and you may need to change that plan over the course of the game. So bottom line, you're not always going to get his ongoing effect off and if you don't, he's just a 1-1 one, one, and that's pretty weak. So a card that's good when you get the ongoing effect off, not so good if you don't, gonna be a bit inconsistent probably depends on the deck. Let's talk about the other one cost cards though and compare him. We've got Hawkeye on reveal if you play a card here next turn plus two power. That effect is a little bit easier to get off because you only need to plan one turn ahead. And he'll become a one cost three power card. We got Misty Knight, a one cost two power card with no effect. Nightcrawler, a one cost two power card that you can move once that's going to have utility in situations where locations are preventing you from moving there. Nightcrawler could be invaluable in that situation. Then we have Quicksilver who has the utility starts in your opening hand. That will be a resource curve smoother. He will enable you to play fewer one cost cards in your hand because the main, one of the main reasons to play three one cost cards is that you will always have something to play on turn one. Blank turns are an absolute killer in this game in Hearthstone. You do not want a blank, blank turn. Quicksilver will guarantee that you never have a blank turn on round one and therefore you can forego the other one cost cards if you want and play cards that cost a little more though I would recommend probably playing at least two one cost cards, maybe Quicksilver and Nightcrawler because 
it'll allow you to smooth out like a, a turn three where you only have a, a two cost card and a one cost card. It gives you options for, for making use of resources that might otherwise go to waste. My favorite one cost card is Quicksilver. I love resource curve smoothers because of the consistency of them. Nightcrawler I like for its utility. This would be a must include in certain with certain featured locations. Misty Knight is a card I'm almost never going to include as it's just a flat two power card with no effect. If I wanted one of those I would absolutely use Nightcrawler or Quicksilver who come with additional effects. Would I ever run Misty Knight over Hawkeye or Ant-Man? Only if the featured location promoted cards with no effect. Otherwise, no. Now, if I were running Quicksilver and Nightcrawler, or in what situation would I consider Hawkeye or Ant-Man better than Nightcrawler? I am, I, I am uh, counting Quicksilver as a must include at this level of gameplay. I would always include Quicksilver in my deck when playing through the first 10 levels, 10 ranks, and we'll see for how long after, but I would always be including Quicksilver in my deck, so one or two more one cost cards are needed. I would almost never include Misty Knight. Hawkeye and Ant-Man together would have more potential than something like Hawkeye and Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler's utility should not be underrated, especially with certain featured locations. If the featured location is one that you cannot move or you cannot play cards at and you can only get power there by moving cards there or with cards that have special effects, then Nightcrawler gains a lot of potential. Hawkeye has the potential to be better than Nightcrawler in most situations, a lot of situations let's say and he would be my pick over Nightcrawler generally. Now, if we're running Quicksilver and Hawkeye, do we need a third one cost card? That's very debatable. Probably not, probably not. I'd probably run Hawkeye and Quicksilver, though I have been running in my deck this far, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, and Quicksilver. Ant-Man I like more than, and that's a, a combination that has more potential than something like Hawkeye, Nightcrawler, Quicksilver but it's going to be a little bit more consistent. So I've been experimenting with it. Uh, I don't really like Ant-Man that much once I actually tried him out. I don't think I get his effect off enough to make him good. And he ends up just existing to smooth out resource curves. So my pick of the first five one cost cards is Quicksilver. You could even experiment with not playing any other one cost cards but I'd recommend one other probably Nightcrawler or maybe Hawkeye. The two cost cards we've got Medusa on reveal if this is at the middle location plus two power. Star Lord on reveal if your opponent played a card here this turn plus three power. Colossus car can't be destroyed moved or have its power reduced. Sentinel, add another Sentinel to your hand, and Shocker, which does nothing. So once again, of the five available two-cost cards, we have one that does nothing, Misty Knight Shocker. Not going to include Shocker very often unless the featured location promotes cards that do nothing. So we've got Medusa with the potential to be four, and that's an on-reveal effect that's going to be very, very consistent. You'll get it off nearly every game. Star-Lord, who's got the potential to be plus 5 power, plus 3, so a total of 5 power, but is going to be a pretty inconsistent effect. A lot of the time he's going to be 2-2, two, two, and depends on how, reliable, how reliably you can predict where your opponent is going to play cards, and in practice it's going to be hit and miss. So Star-Lord is great when you get that plus 3 and he's a 5 power, he's not that great otherwise. Colossus is a utility card, can't be destroyed, moved, or have power reduced. That does have a lot of value in certain situations. It can even win you a, a location in certain situations. If you get the location 
That gives all cards their minus three power. Colossus's power is essentially equal to a power six card for two cost. That is phenomenal. I like this card a lot, having seen it in play. I think it's one of the best two drops. Now, is it better than Star-Lord? Well, it depends on the situation. It depends on what the featured effect is. It depends on how much you're willing to gamble on your own ability to guess where your opponent's gonna play a card. I've been running Star-Lord. I've liked him a lot in some situations, but I've also liked Colossus a lot when I've seen him played against me. So I think Colossus is better more of the time. But there's going to be certain situations where Star-Lord might be better, like Carmitage, which doubles your unrevealed unre effects, procs them twice. Star-Lord could get plus six off of that. That's extremely good. So it really depends on what the featured location is. You can make a good case for Star-Lord or Colossus depending on what the featured location is. Same is true for the one drops. You could make a good case for Nightcrawler or Hawkeye or even Ant-Man depending on what the featured location is. If it promotes ongoing effects, if it pr promotes on reveals, if the featured location is difficult to get cards on. Each of these one drops, with the exception of Misty Knight, well even Misty Knight, could be good if the featured location promotes cards with no effect. So we're seeing versatility in your one drops. Each of them is going to have utility in certain situations. For the two drops, I consider Medusa just a straight good card. Four power for two cost nearly all the time. Star-Lord, Colossus is going to have utility depending on what the featured location is, what you're trying to do with your deck. With Colossus, in my opinion, being a slightly better card more of the time. Sentinel, on reveal, add another Sentinel to your hand. This serves a function of giving you something to play in situations where you might not otherwise have something to play if you get a little unlucky with your hand and draw and you have just high power high cost cards remaining sentinel could give you something to do to help you smooth out a resource curve and he can also have effect so well we haven't really seen cards that that benefit from having a lot of cards in your hand or things like that yet but probably we will so right now we'll just say that Sentinel helps you to smooth out resource curves. And Shocker is only going to be good and only going to be something I'd play if the featured location promotes cards that have no effect. The three cost cards. We've got Iron Heart on reveal. Give three other friendly cards plus two power. That is not a card included in the top ten, so I won't talk about it in this review. We've got Wolfsbane, Mr. Fantastic, The Punisher, Cyclops. Those are the options for three costs that you get in the top in the first ten levels. The others that I have in my collection, Ironheart, Groot, and Hulkbuster, you get later. So we'll talk about Wolfsbane, Mr. Fantastic, The Punisher, and Cyclops. In the starter deck, the starter deck includes two three drops. Wolfsbane on reveal plus two power for each other card you have here. It only has a base of one power. Mr. Fantastic, adjacent locations have plus two power. The Punisher, plus one power for each opposing card at this location, so the potential to become a six power card. And Cyclops with no effect. So again, don't really like no effect cards. It, it is consistent. You always know what you're getting, but in my opinion, you can get more out of the other options often enough that you don't usually want to include a no effect card in your deck unless the featured location specifically promotes it. So, Wolfsbane, Punisher, and Mr. Fantastic. Well, Wolfsbane has the potential to become a seven power card if you've already got three at that location. Not usually going to want to play it as the fourth card, though, is the problem because it's not very powerful for a fourth card drop. I usually like to make my fourth card drop something like Abomination, Iron Man, Hulk. All of those are better than Wolfsbane. So any kind of low cost card that needs to be the fourth drop to reach its fourth 
its full potential is not going to be something I'm going to like very much. I don't like to have four cards at a location early in the game. It gives too much information to your opponent about what they need to do. So I'm not too high on Wolfsbane. I don't think it's that good. I think generally it's going to be like a five power three cost card, which is certainly not bad. Mr. Fantastic is better though. All you have to do is play Mr. Fantastic in the middle and he's a six power three cost card. That's great. So we compare Wolfsbane to Punisher to see which one would be included. And the Punisher plus one power for each opposing card has the potential to get to plus six. If the opponent had four cards at the location, the Punisher would be quite good, but the situation in which you're going to be able to get that off and not have the Punisher be your fourth card at the location is going to be, it's not going to happen very often. More often you're going to see two or three cards at the location. Well, the Punisher is an ongoing effect, so it doesn't have to be the fourth card when you play it. The problem is you can't predict what your opponent's going to do if you play it early when the opponent has only one card or maybe two at the location. It could very well, well, it probably won't deter your opponent from playing anything there, but to me, I've found most often the Punisher ends up being like a, a four power card for three cost and a less consistent one than Cyclops with his no effect. So I didn't like this card too much. I chose Wolfsbane over the Punisher, even though I don't really like Wolfsbane that much. I just don't have very many good options in the one, rank 1 to 11 phase for 3 drops. So, Mr. Fantastic I like a lot. Uh, Wolfsbane I like more than Punisher, but that's not saying much. I don't like Punisher too much. I don't think it's very good. I haven't seen it be very good for me. So I'd choose Wolfsbane over the Punisher, but I'd be swapping out Wolfsbane as soon as something better is available and might possibly even include Cyclops over Wolfsbane. That's actually debatable. Wolfsbane definitely has more potential though. Four drops. We've got Jessica Jones, Kazar, and Thing. Once again, Enchantress was something that came after rank 11. Jessica Jones on reveal if you don't play a card here next turn plus four power. Kazar, your one cost cards have plus one power. Thing, no effect. So, in the default starter deck, there's just one four drop. Jessica Jones is by far the best four drop. It's one of my favorite cards in the early game. In the early ranks, this card is phenomenal. Becomes an eight power card, and you can get that effect off very reliably, almost every time. Kazar would need to buff four one-cost cards just to equal Jessica Jones. That is by far inferior, absent any kind of ongoing effect synergy from locations or from your other cards. Thing is clearly worse than Jessica Jones most of the time. His six power is better if Jessica Jones doesn't get her effect off, but she will most of the time. So I find it hard to imagine when you're building a deck at the in the very early ranks I find it hard to imagine choosing any other card than Jessica Jones that card is phenomenal one of the best cards from rank 1 to 11 so now we get into the end game cards 5 and 6 power cards the Starter deck includes three of them, two five costs, and one six cost. You could easily swap out a five cost for another four drop if you get one that you like. Or possibly swap out a five for another six and run two sixes. But only if you have a way to actually... Well, you, you quite often find you have two sixes in your hand and you can only play one in a game. And that's terrible. If you ran two sixes, it would be so you guarantee that you have a six drop when you need one. Generally, I'd probably only run one six, though. And run two fives or two fours, either or. And right now, the fives are better than the fours, but that could change. So let's look at the fives that we've got available. 
in the first 10 levels we got Iron Man. Ongoing, your total power is doubled at this location. I would call that a must include card in the early ranks. White Tiger on reveal out of seven power tiger to another location, so she's a five cost eight power card, which is inferior to the Abomination, five cost nine power with no effect except in situations where she puts a card, a 7 power tiger, in a spot where it's difficult to play cards. In that case, the white tiger may just flat out win you a location. So which of these would I play? Well, I like Iron Man and Abomination. Because the location where it's, where it's difficult to play cards doesn't come up enough to justify the white tiger for me that's very debatable though and may just be a matter of me not having enough experience to have seen the power of white tiger because I think that card has a lot of potential a lot of potential especially with any kind of build that buffs on reveal effects either player cards or locations featured locations that buff player uh, on reveal effects then white tiger is an auto include because that's a very very strong on reveal effect so Carmitage, she's going to be extremely powerful with Carmitage. maybe just win you the game so i play abomination but with a huge caveat that i think white tiger is very very good and arguably better than abomination most of the time though I think Abomination is easier to play and slightly more consistent. The six cost cards, we've got Spectrum on reveal, give your ongoing cards power plus two. Odin, activate the on reveal abilities of your other cards at this location. And Hulk, nothing, just 12 power. So let's compare the other two six cost cards to Hulk because you're probably only running one and Hulk is very easy to play. In order for Spectrum to ma match Hulk's power, she needs to get plus seven from somewhere. So if there are four ongoing cards on the table, each would gain plus, fa plus four and that would put Spectrum at 13 and then she's phenomenal. Are you going to consistently be able to get four ongoing effect cards on the table in the early ranks of this game? I do not think so. Not consistently, no. I, I really don't think so. And therefore I can't see playing Spectrum more than Hulk unless there's a featured location that specifically buffs ongoing effects in a big way. Then I might play Spectrum over Hulk, but I, I really can't see playing Spectrum over Hulk because you're just not going to be able to get enough out of her to make up the power difference between Spectrum and Hulk. Odin is more of a question. Activate the on reveal abilities of your other cards at this location. Odin only needs to make up four power to be equivalent to Hulk. Now, which on reveal effects? Would that be good with? Well, White Tiger would give you another 7 power Tiger. That alone would make Odin better than Hulk. Uh, Jessica Jones would give you another 4 power. That would make him equivalent to Hulk. And Wolfsbane would give you an additional plus 2 power for each other card you have here. That could easily get you plus 4 or plus 6. That would make Odin equivalent to Hulk. It's hard to make Odin better than Hulk with just one other card, unless it's White Tiger. So in order to make Odin reliably better than Hulk, you would need two other on reveal cards already on the board. How doable is that? Well, if you make your deck specifically around it, it's pretty doable. You could have some combination of like Medusa, Hawkeye, but that would only make Odin equivalent. You could have like I'm not sure how the Star-Lord on reveal would work. But you could have like Wolfsbane, which could easily make Odin equivalent. And with something else, it would make him better. So, I'd say a lot of the time Odin's going to be better. But much more difficult to play. Because it does have to be 
cards at this location. So you have to plan for it in advance. It has to be a situation where you actually all, you need the power at that location. If you've already got two cards with on reveal effects at the location, then you're probably already making a play for the location. It could be something highly contested. The point I'm trying to make is that Odin is not an easy card to make better than Hulk consistently. Hulk is easy. Plop him down, 12 power, done. Odin, to get to 12, just to get to 12 isn't that easy. He's phenomenal with White Tiger. You're not going to have White Tiger on the board every game when you want to play Odin. I don't see him as being phenomenal with any other card. Anytime I see in a card game that I need to play two other cards to make a card good, I think to myself, that's an inconsistent card. You're not always going to be able to get that combination off. So if Odin needs two other cards, generally, to be better than Hulk, then he's going to be much more inconsistent than Hulk, and I'm generally going to favor Hulk. With White Tiger, he's phenomenal. If there was another card in the deck that he was phenomenal with, I'd probably elevate his value. As it is though, I don't think he is better than Hulk. I think Hulk's better the majority of the time. But Odin's flashy and he's great with White Tiger. So when we see more on reveal effects entering the game, Odin's going to get better and better, and eventually I think in the game's life he's going to be better than Hulk, probably much, much better. Right now I like Hulk more, being as I see Hulk as a little more consistent. And Odin requires too much setup, and will often be a win more card, I think, where he wins for you a location where you are already going to win it anyway. So that is all the cards that are available or were available to me as a free-to-play player at rank 11. And I will do more of these card reviews probably every 10 ranks or so as new cards become available. So thanks for watching.